This is 7 National News and in our top story. The UAE Vice President, Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, has officially inaugurated the 15th edition of Cityscape Global at the Dubai World Trade Center today. The event, now in its 15th year, runs until September 8th and brings together around 272 exhibitors from 30 countries. At the opening today, the ruler of Dubai toured the exhibition where he was briefed about the many developments and projects on show. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed was also accompanied by the Crown Prince of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, and Deputy Ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Maktoum bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, as well as other senior officials. Some of UAE's largest developers have already timed a number of major announcements to coincide with the show. These include Amar Properties, which on Monday announced a joint venture with Dubai South to create as many as 15,000 homes in Amar South. Additionally, Amar will be unveiling the tower at Dubai Creek Harbor. Earlier on Sunday, Dubai Holding unveiled the new Jumeirah Central project, which will cost 73.4 billion dirhams to build, with the proposed first phase set at 24 billion dirhams. The new launches come despite softening demand across the UAE as investor sentiment weakens on the back of lower oil prices and slower economic growth. Dubai's Route 2020 expansion of city metro system is set to start operating on May 20, 2020, five months prior to the Dubai Expo mega event. The Crown Prince of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, laid a foundation stone on Monday as the project construction continues. The Route 2020 project covers the extension of the Dubai Metro Red Line by 15 kilometers from Nakhil Harbor and Tower Station to the site of Expo 2020 in Jabal Ali. In June, Dubai's Roads and Transport Authority announced the awarding of a 10.6 billion dirhams contract to Expo Link Consortium led by French firm Alstom, Axonia from Spain and Turkish firm Gulermak to build the extension. The, ex the transport authorities said that the project includes the procurement of 50 trains, 35 to upgrade the metro service and 15 for the expo service. Route 2020 is expected to serve about 125,000 riders per day and the number is set to grow as many as 275,000 riders by 2030 according to the RTA. The trial run on the 15-kilometer route is expected to begin by the end of 2019, with the new stations to serve residential areas such as Discovery Gardens, Furjan, Jumeirah Gulf Estate, and the Dubai Investment Park. Doctors will no longer be compelled to resuscitate dying patients under sweeping changes to the law governing health care. According to local reports, the new rules permit medical staff to allow natural death to take its course and refrain from performing CPR on dying patients who are suffering from conditions that are most likely incurable. If all treatment has failed or at least three doctors advise against resuscitation, a patient will be allowed to die naturally. Until now, any doctor who fails to resuscitate a patient has been liable to prosecution. The change in the law follows a report in April by a task force set up by the health authority Abu Dhabi to examine where improvements could be made in palliative care. The new law brings about other sweeping changes to the way health care is delivered and how medical staff work, including exempting doctors from criminal liability in many cases where they now face prosecution. Under the law, if harm to a patient is self-inflicted or a result of refusal of treatment or failure to follow medical advice, then the doctor concerned will not be liable to prosecution. A doctor will also not be liable if unexpected complications arise that are not caused by medical error. The new law also uh, proposes a tougher stance on health insurance fraud and profit chasing by doctors and hospitals. The law federal decree number 4, 2016 on medical responsibility has been approved by the president and published in the official gazette.
A preliminary report into last month's Emirates Airlines crash landing in Dubai has found that the pilot attempted to abort the landing after an initial touchdown and the plane ultimately hit the runway as its landing gear was retracting. The report released today by the General Civil Aviation Authority indicates the wind changed direction in the final moments before the landing. Flight EK-521 from India had 300 people on board when it crashed on August 3rd. The report says 24 people were, were injured, with the only fatality being an Emirati firefighter, Jasim Belushi, who died from injuries sustained during the emergency response. The report also revealed that the last cabin crew on board were forced to leap from the cockpit emergency windows after a center fuel tank exploded. All other passengers had already been evacuated onto the runway, but the aircraft commander and senior cabin crew member were the last to leave. According to the report, one senior cabinet crew member required medical treatment and was in hospital for five days as a result of smoke inhalation and another required the treatment for blisters on their feet. On the morning of the crash, a wind shear warning was issued at 7.35 a.m. by the National Center of Meteorology and Seismology for all runways at Dubai International Airport. Emirates welcomed the report's findings but said it is waiting for the full report. By 2020, 100 schools in Dubai could become solar schools and as a result, 200,000 families will be contributing towards the Dubai Clean Energy Plan 2050. On Monday, an initiative by Dubai-Solar.org called Dubai Solar Schools was announced and is set to be rolled out over the next three years. The aim of the initiative is to involve the Dubai education sector in the DOA Shams Dubai regulation with 100 schools and universities comprising 200,000 students to be targeted. According to local reports, the managing director of Dubai-Solar.org said that each of the education facilities could host an average of 500 kilowatts of power totaling to 50 megawatts across all facilities. Typically, to install solar panels producing this amount of energy would usually require an investment of approximately 2.5 million dirhams from the building's owner. But the initiative will offer an incentive for those who want to be part of the project. The incentive will require zero capital investment for the school, while certified companies will offer a solar lease formula, which will see the third-party investor charge the education facility a monthly lease fee. According to officials, the fee works out to be about 10% less than the school's existing DIWA bill. At present, 10 education facilities across the city have joined the initiative, and a further 50 schools and universities have undergone a preliminary analysis to gauge whether they are eligible for solar installation. With the annual Hajj season around the corner, authorities at Abu Dhabi International Airport have taken a series of steps to help pilgrims. The airport has put in place health and security measures, including dedicated check-in counters for flights to Mecca and Medina. According to local reports, the Ministry of Health will be providing pilgrims with personal Hajj kits and safety booklets and a fully equipped clinic and has a fully equipped clinic rather has been set up in Terminal 1 for emergency treatment. The airport is also collaborating with the General Authority of Islamic Affairs and Endowments, where, muf where muftis will be available to assist pilgrims, attend to their inquiries, and advise them on religious and Hajj matters. And finally, in the bulletin, the Emirates Group, in collaboration with GE, Etisalat, and Dubai Silicon Oasis Authority, announced the launch of a joint initiative today targeting young entrepreneurs and students in the UAE. The joint initiative called Intilaq will bring together selected entrepreneurs and students from across the UAE to participate in a travel, technology, and aviation-focused incubator. Four winning teams, who will be selected through a rigorous judging process, will be enrolled in the full Intilaq Incubator Training Program and receive 50,000 dirhams to fund and further develop their ideas. Living up to its meaning in Arabic, taking off, Intilaq will also support young entrepreneurs in their quest to become part of the innovative ecosystem in the UAE. The Intilaq partners will reach out to universities and to entrepreneurial centers and co-working spaces to seek out talented teams that are passionate about this challenge. 
They will accept online submissions from September 6th until October 31st at interlock.com and will judge ideas based on creativity, innovation, and feasibility. They will then select 20 top contenders to be enrolled in an intensive two-week boot camp that will train the teams through workshops on design thinking, financial modeling, marketing, and building an investor pitch. The culmination of these two weeks will be a pitch day during which four teams will be chosen as winners and will be given the opportunity to pitch their ideas to the co-founders as well as angel investors. It's a collaboration initiative. It came from uh, the uh, you know um, joining with the three other organizations, very strong brand like GE, uh, Silicon Oasis, and Netsalat who have actually been very uh, vocal about doing something like this. So we've started this and we're working on uh, how we're going to take it forward by actually creating this opportunity for UAE nations and others, of course, not only by visiting universities in the, in, in the UAE and picking uh, and looking at 20, uh, 20 teams of five people where we will be looking for five uh, uh, student to participate in this incubator. We will try it first and see how it goes and I guess we will build on this seeing you know what's the outcome of this program what is it that we're going to learn from it and how how can we do it better to be honest. So I think uh, in my view it will be something that we need to do a bit more you know well, probably again and again but it depends and I mean the excitement is there and we are so proud to see that this is happening and the energy and the passion from the organization that are working with us is there, which helps us a lot, to be honest.